Hello everyone, this video is going to be the ultimate white ink showdown. I have over 10 different white inks that I'm going to put to the test to see which one ends up being the best overall. Let's start off with the various white inks that I'll be trying out in pots. First up we have the Daler Rowney FW Acrylic Ink. Next we have the Liquitex Acrylic Ink, the Windsor Newton Drawing Ink, the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and finally the Amsterdam Acrylic Ink. Those are all the white inks that I have in pot form that I'll be testing out, but now let's go into the pens and markers. First up is the Sakura Jelly Roll. Next, the Uniball Signo, the Posca Marker, the Derwent Graphic Pen, the Pilot Supercolor Pen, an oil-based Sharpie paint marker, and a water-based Sharpie paint marker. I'm going to be swatching these inks a couple of different ways. The first way is going to be on this toned paper. We're gonna start with the Sakura Jelly Roll. This is one of the white gel pens that I use a lot in my work. As you can see, it's quite pigmented when swatched on the toned paper. Next, we're going to test the Uniball Signo. This is, again, the other white gel pen that I use mostly in my work, although I generally prefer this one over the Sakura Jelly Roll. As you can see, it too is nice and pigmented on the toned paper. Next, let's try out the Posca marker. This is definitely more of a paint pen compared to the previous gel pens, but it is a lot cleaner than most paint pens. Next is the Derwent Graphic paint pen. Now this one is definitely one of the prime examples with some of the issues that you have with most paint pens. This one is one of the pens where you press down that it's supposed to be able to disperse the ink to the nib, and sometimes it just gets ridiculously messy. Along those same lines with paint pens, next is the Pilot Supercolor. Now this pen I've had for a while in my collection, and I'm not sure if the problems I ran into it were from that, or it's just generally a fluky kind of um, formula, but as you can see, it's really watery, and it is like, I crazy shook it up, so it's like, not that the ink isn't mixed, it's just a very strange formula. And no matter what I did, it would just like soak into the paper. It was just very strange. Next up, the oil-based Sharpie paint pen. Like with most of the paint pens that I've been testing out, this one I did have some ink flow issues with, but I did eventually get it to work. It just really wasn't as convenient as some of the other choices. And lastly, for the pens and markers, we have the Sharpie paint pen that is water-based. Again, like the other Sharpie paint pen, some ink flow issues, but I did eventually get it to work. And here's the final, completely dried result of the pen swatches on the toned paper. Personally, I prefer the results of the Sakura Jelly Roll, the Uniball Signo gel pen, and the Posca marker. I know the graphic pen looks like it's the most pigmented on this paper, but that little side swatch beside the single stroke is an unreasonable amount of ink that ended up spilling onto the page. And like I said earlier, the main problem that I have with the paint pens is that they are ridiculously messy. I had a problem with all of them, whether it actually is spilt on the page itself or there were clogging issues, whereas the Posca marker, which is definitely closer to a paint pen, there was no mess at all, and it's a great pigmented result. Now let's go into testing out the white inks in pots, starting out with the FW acrylic ink. Now, obviously, the first downfall to these types of inks are going to be that you require another tool to use them, whether that is a dip pen like I'm using or a brush. Next is the Windsor Newton Drawing Ink. As you can see, this one shows up really well and is nice and opaque on the toned paper. Now, when I did this Windsor and Newton swatch, I realized that I might not have shaken up the FW acrylic ink as well as I should have. So I went back, shook it up really well, and then did some more swatches underneath it just so that it was a more accurate representation of the ink. Next, we have the Liquitex acrylic ink. As is generally the case with acrylic inks, this one is nice and bold on the toned paper. Next is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Now, this is one of the inks that I hadn't tried out prior to filming this video to test them all out. And this particular ink is an extremely strange consistency. 
It's almost like icing or a marshmallow fluff if you're familiar with the kind of texture of that. And so originally I tried it with a dip pen, which really did not go very well. So I switched to a brush and it worked a whole lot better. Obviously any of these ink pots can be used with a brush instead of a dip pen, but my generally preferred method is a dip pen, but this one is definitely a brush only. And lastly, we have the Amsterdam acrylic ink. Like I mentioned before with the other acrylic inks, this one is also nice and pigmented. When I was swatching this, for some reason, I just wasn't putting enough ink on the dip pen, so that's definitely not a reflection of the ink, it's definitely a user error. Um, so that's kind of why I'm fighting with it a bit here. I really should have just dipped it in further. I actually accidentally spilt a lot of this ink, so the ink level was not as high on this pot as it was with the others, which is probably Probably why I wasn't getting enough on the pen. And here's the result of the fully dried swatches for the ink pots. As you can see, all of these are pretty opaque. I'm actually surprised that the FW acrylic ink isn't more pigmented. Like I mentioned, I was having some possible issues with mixing it up enough, so it is possible if I had taken some more time to shake it up that it might have turned out a little more pigmented. But yeah, I think all of these are pretty comparable and great choices. The only thing, of course, that I would mention is obviously the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White can only be used with a brush, so that might be a downfall for some people. Um, it is really, um, I'm not sure if you watered it down, if it might be a better result with a dip pen, but straight from the bottle, the Dr. P.H. Martin's was definitely not a good mix with a dip pen. Now for the second round of these swatches, I wanted to see how these inks picked up the possible mediums underneath. This especially pertains to watercolor. I decided to make two different color stripes on this piece of watercolor paper. One is a very dark blue, which is a highly pigmented color and therefore is a great example to see how much of that might mix in with the white ink. It's a very staining color. And the upper swatch, I decided to do a more standard kind of medium um, opaque watercolor. Starting off with the pens again, the first one up is the Sakura Jelly Roll. This is definitely one of the pens that does not like working well on the extremely pigmented watercolors. It picks up the underlying color and mixes in with the white. Next is the Uniball Signo. As you can see, there are a few extra swatches on the watercolor. That was because I actually decided to switch these Uniball pens. Uh, the one I was using was on its last legs and running out, and so I switched to a new one to give you a better example of what the pen was like. Next up, the Posca marker. When I was swatching this, I wasn't completely sure if it was actually the blue picking up on the nib of the pen or whether the Posca ink just wasn't quite as opaque as the gel pens. Next, we have the Derwent Graphic Liner Pen. As with most of my luck with the paint type of markers, this one was also messy. As you can see, I was like trying to shake it to try and get the ink out, and yeah, it wasn't as bad of a mess as it guess it could have been. Um, but as you can see, the ink is just kind of getting everywhere and I have no control over it. Next up is the Pilot Supercolor pen. As with the previous paint type pen, this one again was being very difficult. As you can see, I was continuously trying to shake it up to see if that would improve it, but it just was not helping. This one in particular really sinks into the paper and just does not stay white. Next up is the oil-based Sharpie paint marker. This paint marker was definitely a lot less messy than the previous two. The ink did actually come out without too much trouble, but again, kind of with the other ones, it was not very white. And finally, in the pen category, the water-based Sharpie paint marker. This one I was having some more difficulties with. As you can see, the ink was kind of smearing everywhere, and then it just kind of blew open and was a giant mess on the page. And here is the completely dried results of the watercolor swatches. 
I would say the winner for this would definitely be the Uniball Signo pen. As you can see, it is way more opaque and does not transfer and pick up the dark blue color the same way that the other ones do. The Posca marker is pretty good as well, but I do see it being a little less opaque than the Uniball gel pen, as well as a little bit of transfer of the blue color. But as far as the Sakura gel pen goes, you can see how the blue ended up picking picking up on the nib and kind of smearing over to the pink watercolor side. The graphic pen kind of has that problem as well. And the pilot pen you can't even see show up on either of them basically. I'm actually surprised that the oil-based Sharpie marker didn't show up better. In theory, it wouldn't have transferred the blue color over as it is oil and oil and water do not mix, um, but on its own, it's just not opaque. And then of course you have the gigantic mess that was the water-based Sharpie paint pen on the end. I know the very end looks very opaque, but that paint is so thick you can actually see the cracks in it on this photo. And because it's so messy, you have absolutely no control over it when you would possibly go to draw with it. Now on to testing out the ink pots on the watercolor. We're going to start with the FW Acrylic Ink. This one swatches beautifully on the watercolor, with absolutely no transfer of the dark blue onto any part of the white ink. Next to the test is the Windsor & Newton Drawing Ink. This one, again, swatches quite well on the watercolor, although I did find that it picked up the blue slightly, as you can see right here where there is a bit of a blue streak at the top. It's more moving the watercolor underneath, though, and not so much tinting the ink. Next up is the Liquitex Acrylic Ink. This one, like the previous acrylic ink, worked very well with the watercolor, with very little color transfer onto the white. Next is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. This time I completely forgo the dip pen and went straight to using the brush, which definitely is the much better result. And lastly, the Amsterdam Acrylic Ink. This one, again, is pretty much the same results as the other acrylic inks. Good opacity with basically no color bleeding. And here is the finished results of the ink pot swatching on the watercolor. I would say that these are all pretty great ink choices. The Windsor Newton did have a bit of color bleeding, but not that much. They all worked pretty well on the watercolor in terms of color bleeding. The Dr. P.H. Martins definitely lived up to its name. Even with some less opaque areas with the brush, it did not bleed through at all. So the bleed proof white is definitely bleed proof. If anything, I'd say the Liquitex acrylic ink is possibly a little more translucent than the FW and Amsterdam inks, but I would be pretty happy to use any of these in my watercolor paintings. So as for my final thoughts as to what I think the ultimate white ink is, for the pens, I would say by far it's the Uniball Signo. It is extremely opaque and works equally as well on the toned paper as it does on the watercolor. And unlike pretty much all of the other pens, it has no bleeding or color transfer onto the white. The Sakura Jelly Roll and the Posca Marker are also great options. They just don't perform as well on the watercolor as they do on the toned paper. And you saw in the video how many problems I had with basically all of the paint markers. So I really can't recommend any of those. You might have better luck, but for me, they were just way too messy and finicky. As for the pot ink, I would say my favorites were the FW Acrylic and the Amsterdam. The Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White did work well, but as you can only use it with a brush, it does have some limitations, especially because I'm someone that really enjoys using a dip pen. But honestly, any of these potted inks would be great choices, especially if you're not too concerned about colors bleeding through the white. And those are my thoughts and picks for the ultimate white ink. Definitely let me know in the comments if you have a favorite white ink that I didn't try because I would love to test that out as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.